And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I haven't been in the Seattle area in three years. It's been a long time. You spent a lot of time in Seattle. But I see some things never change. Some things never change. Take a look at this from Bonnie Lake, Washington. This from the Everett Herald newspaper in Everett, Washington. A report from the Bonnie Lake City Attorney on whether, and this is what the newspaper calls them, skin-bearing baristas can legally be required to cover up was postponed until next week. Let me just say this before I read any more of this story. If you have not been following it, if you haven't seen it, we're not talking about nude or topless. They wear bikinis. There are chick... Because let's face it, anyone who's been to the Pacific Northwest knows uh, that the vast majority of women are vast... And therefore, uh, what is happening here is uh, somebody found a new way to compete in the very crowded espresso business. And anyone who's been to the Pacific Northwest knows that those are the people who, yes, these are the ones to blame. They gave us Starbucks, folks. And if you've never been to uh, the Pacific Northwest, let me just say that if you think there's a lot of coffee places, especially Starbucks, where you are, you ain't seen nothing yet. This is a very crowded industry. And so there are some businesses in the state of Washington who have started uh, having their baristas wear bikinis. And the fat and fuglies don't like it. No, they don't. (laughs) The fat and fuglies are upset. Says here, elected officials in Bonnie Lake in Pierce County, Washington are searching for ways to regulate what baristas can wear at drive through espresso stands. Is anybody in favor of this other than fat and fugly females? Seriously. Is anybody in favor of regulating what somebody can wear at work? I mean, I understand. I, I don't agree with it. I understand there are laws against nudity. All right, fine. But you can wear a bikini at the beach. You can wear a halter top. Why shouldn't you be able to wear a bikini at the uh, espresso stand? Why not? Because your baristas are fat and fugly and you don't like the competition. That's what this is all about. That is all this is about. Says here, leaders in several cities and counties, including Snohomish County, are receiving angry calls and letters concerning a growing number of roadside stands that employ teenage girls and women... Dressed in bikinis, lingerie, and pasties. Boo hoo hoo. On Saturday morning, a handful of picketers, I'd like to see a photograph of those picketers, by the way, <laughs> showed up at two espresso stands in Bonnie Lake, known for scantily clad baristas, City Administrator Don Morrison said. This is all about a handful of picketers who are probably as big and fat and ugly as a female can be. That would just be my guess says here that Bonnie Lake has an ordinance in place that requires women to cover their breasts from the nipple down. Why? Why? Anybody in favor of this? 
It says here that city code also prohibits people from wearing revealing undergarments such as thongs or G-strings, he said. What do you mean wearing revealing garments such as thongs or G-strings? Does that mean anywhere, like in the privacy of their own home or on their front lawn or in their backyard? You're kidding me, right? Says here, the city attorney is looking up case law to see if Bonnie Lake's laws can be applied to espresso stands, Morrison said. He's planning to give his report during a council work session. Jesus Christ. You have got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. It's outrageous. You know what's really interesting, though? What's really interesting is how often the fat and fuglies are the ones who are protesting. Things that the rest of the girls don't have any problem with. You know, the fat and fuglies protest when a Hooters opens. God knows why. The fat and fuglies are protesting uh, over the years. They've protested against Playboy magazine. That's because they would never be seen in Playboy magazine. And their husbands uh, like to read Playboy magazine and they don't like the competition. How about the fat and fuglies who've protested at abortion clinics? Ever seen a hot chick protesting abortion? Never. The women who protest abortion are women who can't even dream of getting knocked up. Much less having abortions. You know, and of course now you've got the fat and fuglies who are demonstrating against uh, sexy baristas. Maybe people ought to protest against $5 cups of coffee. Maybe they'd have a a little more sympathy from the rest of us. But have you ever noticed the fat and fuglies? They're just jealous. They're just angry. They are angry about the uh, the hot chicks. Hot chicks don't get hot. For example, our own show. When a woman calls up and yells and screams about our show, I can tell you what she looks like without seeing her. Fat and fugly. Fat or fugly, fat and fugly, fat old and fugly. (laughs) Any combination thereof. Hot chicks have no problem with this show. Hot chicks have no problem with Playboy magazine. Hot chicks have no problem with legalized abortion. Hot chicks have no problem with sexy baristas. It is always some ugly, fat, or fugly chick. Who is out protesting this stuff? Am I wrong about this? Tom like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Like it. Tom like in Hollywood at 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Shauna in Parkland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. You're on the Tom like show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Do you care, Shauna? You know, I really don't, but. Um... Well, don't pretend. <laughs> Well, sorry. Um, I was just calling in regards to your last comments about that hot women don't disagree with Playboy and hot women don't protest against bikini coffee stands. That's right. And I think that that's just as, you know, you're against stereotypes in other sort of ways. No, I really never said that. I think most stereotypes have a certain amount of uh, maybe a grain of truth in them. And when they are true, uh, uh, in the broadcasting business, we're, we're not in the business of saying, well, you know, there was that one attractive woman in 1984 who was opposed uh, to abortion. Uh, there's no room for that. Okay, I, and I understand that, and I can see some validity in a lot of stereotypes, but... I I personally would consider myself a rather attractive female. Most of my really? friends. How tall are, are you? I'm five seven and a half. How much do you weigh? One thirty. One thirty. One thirty. Mm-hmm. But my chest is a little bit bigger, so that kind of adds. But regardless. And you're um, a, you're a nine or a ten? Yeah, I. Really? Say, Would that be are you a 10? Are you a 10? I'd say I'm a 9. You'd say you're a 9. Safely, I'd say I'm a 9. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, and, and most of my girlfriends are also 9s or 10s. Um, <laughs> Come on, there are not go. that. Now, now I know you're making it up because I've been to Portland many times. Uh huh. And we call it Portland for a reason. There are not that many nines and tens in Portland. There are many nines and tens from Portland, and they got out of town as soon as they can. 
Well, I'd have to disagree with you on that one. But um, Really? Where yeah, are all these hot chicks? Because we've been there. I, I know you've been here. Many times. Um, I don't know. I'd say go to Nordstrom, hit the cosmetic counter. You'll see a lot of nines or tens. Probably in from out of town. Pardon? They're probably in from out of town. Mm, no, I, I don't think so. But what I was trying to say is when you stereotype women as the hot women, and a lot of times the hot women get stereotyped as the dumb hot women, because a lot of times... I never women, did that. Don't no, don't I talk about what the other I'm people are doing. You. I'm not saying you. I'm saying that a lot of times, and I've had this happen in my life, where people automatically think I'm unintelligent because I'm pretty. And I think that a lot of times women that do base their merit in life, whatever it is that they do, they base it on their looks. They get jobs because of their looks. They don't get educated. They're not too intelligent. They are going to be four things like bikini coffee shops and Hooters and Playboy, and that's wonderful. But I think that there is a good group of women that are intelligent and gorgeous and think for themselves and have opinions and may or may not. Even they don't oppose or protest against any of the things I mentioned. They may oppose or protest. I don't see them. I see the protests. They're on television. I've seen newspaper photographs. We are not talking about bathing beauties here. Okay, I'm just saying that there are probably quite a few attractive women that do oppose. Well, I, I just things. don't. So where are they? Um, probably working. Probably have ah, they're too to busy. Do. So what you're saying is the women who are protesting, now look who's stereotyping. Women who are protesting don't have jobs. So it's unemployed women who are against sexy baristas. Possibly. I see. So uh, are you saying then that only attractive women can get jobs and unattractive women are less likely to be employable? No, I am certainly well, not Well, why is it that the that. women at the protest tend to be unattractive? They tend to be unattractive, but I've been... So you agree with me. Wait a minute. No. I've been to a fair number of protests and there have been some, not a lot. No, no. Hot chicks, hot chicks say it. Hot chicks protesting against pornography. Hot chicks protesting against abortion. Come on. It happens. I, now, I, darling, even a broken clock is right twice a day. The point is, because there's an occasional exception to the rule, it doesn't disprove the rule. Okay. Sounds good. Generally speaking. But by the way, why is it necessary to say this? And why is it women who always call with this call? You know, there was an attractive woman once who was opposed to pornography. I saw her. They're like, so what? Well, I, I'm just saying it's silly to say that only fat, ugly women are against pornography. With the, okay, all right, uh, again, you're being a brick. With an occasional exception to the rule, like every other rule has an occasional exception. Yes, there is an occasional exception to the rule. So what? No, I think if you say hot chicks that are maybe unintelligent and base. I never talked about intelligence level. I'm talking about hotness level. The yeah, hotter a woman is, the less likely it is you're going to see her on a picket line. I guess. Hello? Are you telling me it's like a bikini contest there and all these picket lines? Is that what you're telling me? No, no, but I think that intelligent hot women are certainly different than hot women that basically... I don't really care about the intelligence level. I'm talking about when I look at a protest, I don't see hot chicks. Okay, well... What was the last protest you attended? Well, it was an anti-war one a ways back, so... How, how far back? Oh, kind of when we went into Iraq, so... That was a, a while ago. Oh, I see. And why I is that? So it's been six that. years. Because I have a kid and a job, and it's really... Oh, uh, I see. It's really not that Yes, I see. So all the people who have nothing better to do are the protesters. Yeah, I guess. I see. Boy, that's a real indictment of protesters. I don't know. People that feel threatened by it, I guess, would be protesting it. Right. And why would hot chicks feel threatened? Rich guys want to pay for everything. But I'd imagine that there are hot chicks that don't feel threatened or 
there are hot. Well, you would imagine it, but you that. you might imagine that. But in the reality, in the world, in the real world, you don't see the hot chicks on the picket line, and you just admitted that. Yeah, I'm just saying that it's not not all hot chicks are for those things. Again, I'm not saying they're for them. I'm just saying they don't protest against them. Okay, well then I'll agree with you. Oh Jesus, you're killing me, Larry. Uh, reminder don't let one of those move into your house Tom <laughs> don't do it that's what every night would be like <sighs> hey did you say fat chicks are ugly there was a chick who was beautiful she had a beautiful face but she was fat and you said all oh, fat chicks are ugly <sighs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Frank on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Frank. How are you, sir? Do you care? Of course. How was your vacation to France? It was spectacular. Outstanding. While you were gone, this was. It, that's when it came out in the news. I saw the footage. It was a large, large, large fat woman driving a large SUV. And the reason she got upset was because it was offensive to her children. Oh, I'll bet it was offensive to her children. Of course, it wasn't offensive to her. It was offensive to her children. And what she did was try to make a clothing drive to clothe those poor women that oh. did not have any clothes on. Oh, my. <laughs> and then after, the, after they were, the coffee shop received those clothes, those generous, beautiful women donated to a charity of need. Ouch. So... That's that's it. I mean, hey, any any way to make money in a business, I'm all for it. So am I. So uh, can you do me a favor? I don't know if anyone's been taking out Bill O'Reilly style with art in the background. Let's see what we have here. Are you ready? I'm ready, Tom. All right, Frank. Here it comes. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. <laughs> By the way, you can get the factor for kids at Amazon.com. <laughs> you always knew he was really like that, didn't you? Come on. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? It's going okay, Steve. Yes, I do care because I just, I just tuned in. It's the first time I heard you, and I have to say I agree with you. Fat and ugly women protest this stuff because they don't make bikinis and triple extra large. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... By the way, did you ever see, you know, you got Lane Bryant. Did you ever see that competitor to Lane Bryant? It's called The Forgotten Woman. No, I have not. Yeah, there's actually a competitor. I'm not making this up. There's a competitor to Lane Bryant called The Forgotten Woman. It's like, why do you think she's been forgotten? Look at her! Well, I can tell you this much. You know, I just got divorced and my wife weighed 300 pounds and she used to get pissed when I would look at something else. <laughs> how how dare you look at other attractive women? Exactly. Her comment was, don't you love me? I'm like, that's not the point. As, as, as you, know my response, you know what my response is to a 300-pound woman who says, don't you love me? My response is as follows. Don't you love yourself? Yeah, that is a good response. <laughs> I mean, you're out of there now, but if anyone else is listening and your big whale of a wife says, uh, don't you love me? That's what you say to her. Don't you love yourself? Well, I mean, I mean you are one Cinnabon away from a kidney transplant. Yep, at least. <laughs> well, you have a nice day, and it was nice talking to you. Thank you, Steve. Sure it was. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mike. And I, I definitely agree with you. Uh, I think for fat and fugglies, they feel it's easier to move the middle of public attitude than it is to move themselves. No pun intended. That's right. 
Um, yeah, I mean, they, and, you know, there's also the first strike advantage, too. Um, you know, if I strike out at my threat first, you know, whoever strikes the first blow maybe can win the battle, and uh, maybe it's easier to get women to cover up so, you know, so that I won't have to, if I were fat and fugly, uh, maybe change my lifestyle, eating habits and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, you know, strike out at the, at the uh, slim gals or at the guys who who like women to be slimmer which is i guess most guys absolutely yeah so i, I definitely agree you, with you and um you, know, you can uh take me out uh elliot spitzer style if you like elliot spitzer style here you go number nine the remorse i feel will always be with me from those to whom much is given much is expected number nine number nine number nine Number nine. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is uh, Jeff in Portland on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. So we're talking about hot women not not being against uh, Playboy and that kind of stuff? Yes. I think I think I would, uh, I think I'd disagree with you on that one. Give me some examples. Well, first of all, I don't really think there's that many hot women out there. Oh, well, well, even if there aren't, how many of them are protesting against pornography, sexy baristas, abortion, Playboy, Hooters? How many? Well, I think when you look at the type of women who are doing Playboys and those kinds of things, they're more concerned about themselves and their looks. They don't really care about about the goodwill of, of humanism. What The goodwill of humanism? What are you talking about? Um, well, if you've got women out there who are... Um, who are taking care of themselves and that nature. And there's really not that. You, you talked to Shauna. No, no. Really what are you? No, no. Don't. No, no. I'm not letting you off the hook. I'm not letting you off the hook. I'm not letting you off the hook. What did, what did you mean when you just uh, referred to humanism? Be specific. I'm listening. Well, as far as being against um, um, things that in, you know, let's say um, religious circles are looked, are looked at as negative to our culture as far as, um, you know, abortion and that sort of thing. So. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, I don't think uh, there are as many hot women who are religious, frankly, because they yeah. don't have to pray to become uh, wealthy or to live in a good house or uh, to have good things happen to them. They, if they look good, it all comes to them. So uh, I tend to think the more religious you are, the more likely it is you are homely. Really? Yes. Well, I, I don't think that... Uh I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. Fine. Point is, uh, the kind of people who are religious are people who, rather than doing something to make things better, they pray that things will get better. I could say that some some probably would do that, yeah. I, I think most probably do that. Um, well, that's kind of, that's, that's kind of a different, different... You don't see me that. praying for things to get better, I'll tell you that. Yeah, because... Because people think that that money makes everything better. Good looks. And and trust me, if you had money, Jeff, you'd know that money makes things a lot better. Does it? Oh, yes. (laughs) How do you know I don't have money? What? But how do you know that I don't have money? Because uh, of your opinion. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do for a living, Jeff? Um, I'm in sales, actually. What do you sell? Food products. Food products. So you work at the register at McDonald's? I what? You work the register at McDonald's? No, no, I'm actually sales Sorry. manager for a food manufacturer. You were sales manager for food manufacturer. How much do you make? Um, fifty thousand. That's not a lot of money, Joe. He gets me by. Hey, that's exactly right. That's all it does. Yeah. So, so do you have any? Do you, are you religious at all? Nope. Don't nope. need to be. I'm rich. And successful. What What about in the end of your life? You don't think there's anything after this life? No, I don't. Really? That's right. Well, that's too bad. No, it isn't. I have heaven on earth. Yeah, but... Uh, See, all you have is you have to hope things are going to get better because you're not going to make them any better. You have no ambition. This is as far as you're going to take it. That's it. So you have to hope life is better in the afterlife. I believe in making your life good today, just in case you're wrong.
So you don't believe in any any sort of afterlife? Nope. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, it's the uh, afterlife of worm food. Of what? Worm food. That's what I'm going to be after I'm dead. Well, uh, I guess... I guess that's your belief system. Well, it is, and that's because, again, uh, people like you with no ambition uh, always have to hope that in your next life or in the afterlife uh, that things will that? get better because you're not going to do anything to get them better yourself. How are you going to say that I have no ambition? Do you not do you not see bad things in this life? What are you talking What do you mean, do I not see bad things in this life? What, what kind of bad things are you talking about? What do you think is What do you think is the cause of bad things in this life? Uh, uh, what bad things are you talking about? Do bad things not happen? Not too many of them happen to me. Not too many of them happen to you? No. But you don't see them in other people's lives? Well, it's been many times, as you find, on the, if you listen to the callers on this show, uh, many of the problems are of their own making. And, and people like you don't take responsibility for the things you've done to yourself. People like me. People like you, yes. <laughs> so you pray for things to get better? Um, yeah, that would be one way. Yeah. Well, another way is to make things better. And that's what I believe in doing. Okay. Um, so, what, so, so back to your question at hand about hot women. Why did you get off the question if uh, now you want to get back to it five and a half minutes into the call? Well, because you took me off of it. I didn't take you off of it. I didn't bring up religion. You did. When did I bring it up? Don't be a brick. Seriously. I didn't bring it up. You turned the conversation to that way. How would I know what your religion is? Does it matter? You brought it up. So so what is what is uh, the whole thing about you think every hot woman, you think all hot women... Um, I didn't use the word all. Uh, granted, there could be some kind of genetic uh, hiccup somewhere along the way. And somewhere along the way, there might be a hot woman who is religious. There just aren't that many of them. Yeah. I don't know what it is about uh, religious women uh, enjoying beehive hairstyles and heavy use of eyeshadow and, uh, and uh, odd colors of nail polish. I have no idea where that comes from. Uh, what I particularly enjoyed seeing on TV was all the uh, fundamentalist Mormon women who were uh, some of the homeliest unibrows I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> why would it? Yeah. Why, I'll tell you what, if women look like that, I don't want to be a polygamist. Forget it. Yeah. Well, I guess when you know when you have your faith in something other than things of this world, you don't really care about what you look like because that's not what's going to get well, you happiness. Well, again, uh, I have happiness today. Yeah, but, and if yeah, you're but, wrong, imagine if I had waited until the next life to be happy. Hey, but Tom, if I'm right, imagine how sad you're going to be. For I'm not going to be sad. I'm going to be dead. Okay, but th but this life. Let's say let's say that religious people are right, or Christians for that for that matter are right. Okay, this lifetime is just the blink of an eye of eternity. Well, again, uh, yeah, uh, and, and people uh, like you have been saying the world is ending now for hundreds of years, and it's not. I, I haven't I haven't said that. People like you. I didn't like say you. The, the phrase people like you does not necessarily include you in the subset. Do you understand? Yeah, I got that. Right. So when I say people like you, don't take it personally. Oh, I don't. But just Well, you do. You started defending yourself. Okay, but just as easily as you can say that, um, you know, just in case you want to make the best out of <sighs> Well, What happened to our topic here, Jeff? I thought Why you were not? going back to our topic. Why not just in case? Believe in, believe why not? In, in because because you know what? I, I just love people like you who see religion as just a big casino. It's like it's like a church is like Caesar's Palace. You put one on the red and one on the black. Why don't you believe in God just in case He exists? That's exactly that, the there's, of what you were just. There saying. is real commitment. You know, <laughs> you know what? I don't believe in God, but just in case He exists, you know what? I'm going to tell people I believe in Him. No, that's just... That's, that's what I'm going to do. I don't believe any of that mumbo-jumbo, all those fairy tales. But just in case I'm wrong, I'm going to say I believe in it, and I'm going to show up at a church and pretend that I do believe it. Do you see how ridiculous... Do you see how ridiculous... No, do you see how ridiculous you sound? No, see, that sounds ridiculous. I've had enough. Thank you. Tom like 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likis. Hi, Tom. I love you. As well you should, darling. You're awesome. Thank you. Okay, so what are we talking about? I don't know. I'll tell you what. Buy a radio. Call me back. It's the Tom Likas Show.
97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. The Tom Likas Show coming to you from Hollywood at 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Okay. We're talking about the protest against hot and sexy baristas in Bonnie Lake, Washington. Oh, yes. A lot of the fat and fuglies are upset. But um, in the very competitive espresso business of the Pacific Northwest, that there are women uh, stripping down to bikinis to sell espresso. <laughs> Sarah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey, I just Sarah. wanted to tell you, first of all, that I love your show. I listen all the time. And I totally agree with you on this topic. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm 24. I think I'm an attractive woman. Um, I'm a stripper in Hollywood. And I really would never protest anything like that. I think that those people are just worried because, you know, they're insecure about the way that they look. And so they feel like they need to take other people's jobs in the way that they make money away from them because they could never do that. Well, uh, yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. It's it's the Fuglies uh, campaigning against the hot chicks. That's what it's all about. Exactly. And it's like, you know, that, you know, I've never, ever had a hot, uh, attractive woman tell me, oh, my God, I'm offended because you're a stripper. But let me tell you, I've had a lot of fat and ugly ones. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, yeah, anyway, I just had to call because I've always wanted to call you. And I just want to say I think you're great and I agree with everything you say. So keep doing what you're doing, Tom. Thank you very much. Appreciate the yeah. call, Sarah. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Steve. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. You know, the, the point that I would take an exception, I think, uh, and the one caller actually brought the point up, didn't do a real good job, but you're saying really these beautiful guys with these nines and tens, maybe they're not really that involved in other causes other than themselves. You know, maybe they're a little self-centered and they don't want to take the time to... Everybody is self-centered. Everybody. You know what? There's very few selfless people out there. Even Mother Teresa, in my opinion, uh, she did good deeds because it made her feel good. We all do what makes us feel good. Well, I think it's a matter of degree. You know, maybe a, a real a gal from nine or ten. She's spending a lot of time on her looks. Thank and God. She's not concerned. Well, well, yeah, some of these fat not, and fuglies ought to spend. A, some of these fat and fuglies ought to spend some more time on their looks. Yeah, but as far as your point too, that you're talking about all the different types of protests. Other than this particular one, I haven't seen all of them. I don't know. There's a lot of protesting going on. Whether there's some hot chicks on there, I don't know. I mean, I've been seeing all those protests. You know, if, if you're looking at, like, the uh, the incident with the uh, illegal aliens, that big protest in L.A., I'm sure there were some hot chicks there. I, I think it's a pretty... pretty protests against thing. illegal aliens? I did not see any hot chicks protesting against I'm illegal sure. aliens. Well, I, I mean, I don't know. I didn't, you know, I looked at it, but just as an overview, I don't know. I mean, I think it's kind of a generality, you know, that, uh, that there's probably not hot chicks there. It's generally you know? true. I I don't know. I haven't, well, I haven't seen a lot of protests. You know, I've seen a few, but well, I... Well, okay, you ought to get out a little more, Steve. Pardon me? You ought to get out a little more. Well, I mean, how many protests have you seen? Many. You, seen you know what? I live in Los Angeles. I've seen protests at the Federal Building in Westwood. I have seen protests at Planned Parenthood around town. I have seen war protests. I mean, Steve, well, I live in the big city, and I know you live down there in El Toro or wherever you live. I, I live here in the big city where we see protests all the time. Yeah, but I mean, okay, if you wanted to say that, I mean, you think there's, you take it the other way. You think there's a bunch of hot looking, great looking guys there as well? I mean, you think it's people. I, I, I couldn't care less about hot guys. That's that's your interest. I don't have any interest in hot guys. No, I don't either, but I'm telling you this, though. That I couldn't care less. I'm just saying hot chicks are not protesters. Well, I think it might not be the best looking people. Or but yeah, but you just admitted you don't even see protesters. You don't even see protests. How do you know who's at protests? I don't. I don't. But okay. I don't you and and by the way, you, apparently you don't even watch the news. How many hot chicks do you see at protests on the news? I, I, How many? I don't know. And where? No, you don't, do you? But I, I think you're limited. So, in other words, you know nothing about this. 
Well, I think you know not a whole lot either. Really? So, so I tell you what, you think I, I haven't passed the federal building and seen protests? You think I haven't seen people protesting in the streets of Hollywood, stopping down traffic? Do you think I haven't seen people in Koreatown protesting in front of Planned Parenthood? I've seen it repeatedly. But that's still somewhat limited. You know, it's Oh, like, it's stop not- it. Stop it. Stop it. You, nobody's more limited than you are sitting down there at the El Toro Y. Where the, the 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 biggest feature is that you got easy on, easy off AM PMs on the freeway. Come on, Jesus! One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Mark in Portland, Oregon. Hello, Tom. I'm right in the middle of the Fugly District, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, I've been married for twelve years, and anybody who is disagreeing with you doesn't understand the nature of women they're competitive against other women when other women are hotter and they're hypocritical they love looking at other women and comparing themselves when they're hot and when they're not they can't stand it they don't want you looking at them they don't want them looking at them they don't want them on tv they don't want them in magazines they don't want them in catalogs when i first got married my wife was probably 105 pounds now she's about 180 Ugh. They're used to. We used to watch the swimsuit specials for uh, Sports Illustrated together. We get Victoria's Secret catalogs and we go through them together, pick out stuff that would be good for her. Now I see them come in the mail, and like the next day when I get home from work, they're all gone. They just magically disappeared. Isn't that amazing. Yeah, and guess what happened to the swimsuit stuff? Uh huh. We're not watching that. We just flip on by. <laughs> That is the nature of women, and you are right on. And uh, now are you a prisoner forever? Is that your deal? Oh, no, no, no. What are you going to do about it? Well, deal. Now, I'm for him, because I want control over his outcome in life. I'm holding him. I'm sorry we're losing you. I wish I, I wish I could hear what he had to say there. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? Great. Long time listener. First time caller. I love your show. I listen all the time. <laughs> Tom, Dad, you're the man. I love you. I listen to you every day. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Hey, this is what I have to say about all these fugly women who can't handle... Other women being hotter than them. If all these women want to sell coffees and not wear any clothes, then go ahead and let them. It gives all the other women better chances of getting better jobs. They're not out there taking all the good jobs. They're out there selling coffees. If they want to make minimum wage their whole life, then what's the problem with that? Why are they complaining? They should be happy. By the way, we have posted photos of some of the protesters. These are real photos of the real protesters on our MySpace. Uh, you go to myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S, and you will see them. And you decide for yourself if you think these are hot chicks. If I'm on MySpace, I'm not going to be looking at those women. Sorry, Tom. <laughs> Uh, yeah, go to our MySpace page and see the women for yourself, and you make a decision there. Justin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you doing, Tom? Great. Wonderful, wonderful. Listen, I want to say that I've lived my life with the Tom Bible for the first 27 years of my life without even knowing you existed. Wow, very nice. Uh, I uh, I grew up in a place called Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we didn't have the privilege of having you. I understand. Uh, well, I wanted to call, and, and, and in all fairness, we're not really talking about percentages here. You know, it's like saying, uh, how many nines and tens are, are, are there out there? It's like saying, for some reason, in Alabama, or in, you know, even in Oklahoma, there's only one black guy. How come there's no black guys at the protester, you know? All right, there you go. That'll have to stand as the last word, I guess. The Tom Likas Show.